Welcome out. Welcome back to another edition of Pose and PE. Today is Friday, and as you know, on Friday, we play some super fun sports because it's fun, fitness, fun, fitness Friday. <laughs> so today we are playing, as you know, this week is territory invasion sports. We're going to combine three sports into one to play a hill mount favorite. All right, you don't need many materials, but we'll tell you what materials you do need and you'll probably be able to tell us what the sport we're playing is. First thing you need is some kind of ball, okay? You can see we have balls of different sizes depending on the size of us, all right? The key with the ball is that it can fit into a, a net, like a soccer type net, and also that it could fit into a basketball net, okay? So we didn't want balls that were too small by the same token, we didn't want balls that were too big, okay? The other two things you need are a little bit trickier. You need uh, some kind of a soccer net, all right? You can use one like this, or you can just make your own with, you know, two water bottles, spots on the wall, a couch, whatever you have. And you also need a basketball net, okay? Now, if you don't have a basketball net, maybe you could use a bin or a bucket or something like that, okay? Just test out your nets. Make sure your ball can fit inside. As you know, if you don't have a ball, just roll up some socks, roll up a sweater, uh, whatever it is. Use a stuffed animal, right? Create your own ball, okay? And other than that, you need your full water bottles. We're going to use two of these today as pylons as well. So if you prefer to use pylons, that's great too. You can grab those as well, okay? So go grab all those things, and we'll see you back here soon for Socket Ball. ball. Alright, hey, Hillman, I hope you grabbed what you needed. You can put it to the side for now because we're going to warm up our bodies first. Follow me. Let's warm up our bodies. Hillman, hey, welcome back to the Posen Basement. I'm Mr. Posen. Jacob is here. Ella is here. We are ready to play some socket ball with you today. Socket ball uses our entire bodies three sports in one. So we're gonna be able to, we're gonna make sure to warm up our entire body so we're able to play the best we can. Let's take this to a run. You got it. Can we run low? Can we run high? Can we do bomb kicks? And what about high knees? Let's take this to a step, touch, and four. Here we go. You got it. Let's add an arm bump. Or lateral, excuse me. There we go. What about a curl? And a bench press. Great job, everybody. Let's do that arm pump. What about a fly? And a snap. Great job, everybody. All right, let's just take this to a mark. We're going to do some heel dig. You dig your heel into the ground, and then the other side. You've got it. I hope you feel your heart starting to beat pretty fast. Good for you if you're starting to get warm. 
Can we take this knee to elbow? It goes just like this. You got it. Can we try that with the hop? There we go. Same thing, but with the ladder climb. Great job. Gonna go to a run in four, three, two, run. Oh, you are running. Keep it up. You know what's coming. Quick feet in four, three, two, one. Great job, everybody. Grab a drink from your bottle and we'll see you for the aerobics. It's time, grab your ball and come follow me. Here we go. Socket ball. Let's warm up with our ball. We're just holding our ball. We have a nice round ball. We're putting it to the right side, to the middle, to the left side. You got it. Let's try this with a squat as we go down. So it's squat up, turn, squat up. Turn, squat, there we go, up, down, there we go, let's just stay down, that's easier, isn't it? Beautiful, I hope you feel it in your core, keep your core nice and tight during this, you should feel it in the tops of your legs as well, really good for your body, especially since they're nicely warmed up right now. All right, let's take this back to a march. As we're marching, you have the ball in two hands, just throw it up in the air and catch it. You know how to do this because we've done it so many times before. Coordination is so important in almost every single sport. Can you march and catch your ball? If you can't, you can always let it down and then catch it, okay? You don't have to catch it directly if that is too hard for you. All right, speaking of bouncing the ball, can we bounce it and catch it? So it's taking a bounce, and we're catching it with two hands. Keep that march going, Hillmount. Good for you if you are. Can we take this to a dribble with just our right hand? So we're still marching. Remember, if it's too hard for you, you can always stay at the one we did previously. But if you can do it, keep it going with the mark and your right hand. What about your left hand? It's important to be able to dribble with both hands in basketball and in European handball. So it's important in socket ball. Don't worry, if you don't know what that is yet, you will find out. Can we do hands? Two hands, so it's one hand to the other hand. When we dribble, if you need to catch it, that's fine too. But if you can, keep your bounce going. Keep the dribble going. Excellent. Socket ball also uses our soccer skills. So let's put the ball down. And we're going to do it one foot to the other foot. You've got it. It's one touch with one foot. Then to the other foot, and if you get good at it, it should be a little bit of a hop in between. All right, almost like you're doing a little jump in between. You might have to look down, but it's even better if you can look up at me as you're doing this. I know it's a little tricky. It's tricky for us too, but good for you if you're trying and maintaining some control with your ball. All right, let's pick that ball up. Let's see, can you catch it with just your right hand? Just your right. We're going back to our catching. Keep your march going. Good for you if you are starting to breathe hard. I love it. You're going to be so good at soccer ball today. Try with your other hand. Let me see how you're doing. You can do it with your left hand. Keep it going. Keep that march going. Can we do hand to hand? So it's one hand to the other. 
Beautiful. What about over your head? What about between your legs? There we go. All right, grab a drink from your bottle and we'll see you for the soccer ball skills. All right, Hillman, welcome back. Grab your ball. Let's learn the skills for socket ball to get ready for the big game. Come follow me. The sock in socket ball stands for soccer. All right, so for all these skills, we're going to work on our dribbling and our shooting. Those are the two most important things that are relevant to us playing indoor small space socket ball. For the dribbling, remember when you dribble, Hillman. One foot, then the other. Use the inside of your feet if you can to get it from one foot to the other foot. All right, and it's good if you get good at it. If you're able to look up once in a while, so don't stare at the ball because you've got to know if the defender is coming at you. So once in a while, can you look up and tell me how many fingers I'm holding up? Good for you if you just said two. How many fingers am I holding up right now? And let me make one tricky for you. How many fingers am I holding up right now? All right. Can we dribble with just our left foot? So just our left foot, any way you can. So important in soccer to be able to use both feet. All right, if you want more in-depth in soccer, you can always go to our soccer video, the very first one we ever posted, and the one with the most views, I believe, as well. Can you do it with just your right foot? Just using your right. Can you dribble? in soccer remember to look up once in a while as well as you dribble beautiful all right soccer also involves our shooting when we shoot remember we stand a little bit behind the ball Hill now remember you always shoot with the inside of your foot and whatever you're shooting today remember you're in a tight indoor space we don't want to hit any TVs or furniture or walls too hard. So let's keep it nice and easy and nice and low. Okay? What we're doing, we're walking behind, stepping into it with our non-dominant foot, and then we're going to come forward with our dominant foot. And remember, after you strike the ball, remember to follow through straight to your target. All right, let's try three of those. Here we go. You've taken your three shots. We are ready for the kit. The kit in soccer ball stands for basketball. Basketball is played with our hands, as you know. And when we dribble, we bend our knees and we try to just hit the ball with our fingertips. Okay, we're not slapping the ball. We're pushing the ball down using our fingertips as we stay low. Now, same thing with the soccer. Can you do it with your head up once in a while? How many fingers, Hill Mount? How many fingers, Hill Mount? And how many fingers and thumbs, Hill Mount? All right, that last one was six. Keep your dribble going. Can you do it just on your right side? Just on your right side. You want to turn your body a little bit to face the right. Just on your right side. Good, and you might be bouncing a little bit with your ball up and down. Let me see how you're doing. Looking really strong. Keep it going. You're going to do great in socket ball. Can you do it just on your left side? The other side. Turn to the left. Can you keep your dribble going? The great thing about dribbling is this is relevant in the European handball, too. We dribble like this in basketball and in the European handball. All right. When we shoot in basketball, we use both hands. Remember, we have our shooting hand, but our other hand doesn't just stay still. It acts as our guiding hand to help us guide the basketball towards the net. Same thing. This is not a full basketball video. If you want to learn more about basketball, 
go back to our basketball instructional video and you can check out all the skills there. But shooting is important for socket ball. All right, bend your knees. One hand on the ball, it's acting as your shooting hand. Other hand to guide it. Remember him, and when you're shooting right now, you're in a small space. Do not hit your ceilings or lights or TVs or anything like that. Aim for a spot maybe on the wall or maybe for it to come down and hit a spot on the floor. All right, and when we shoot, we do a little bit of a jump. That doesn't need to be a high jump. A little jump right where we are. And remember, right after we release the ball, we follow through with our shooting hand like we're taking a cookie from that cookie jar. Okay? Let's try three of those. Here we go. Alright, we hope you did three of them. Finally, the ball in European handball stand, the ball in soccer ball stands for European handball. We've already done our dribbling, it's the exact same as basketball, the exact same. Alright, they do that in European handball as well, as we know. So the one thing we need to do is our shooting for European handball. Much different than for basketball. Remember, we hold the ball in one hand, our dominant hand. We turn our body slightly sideways. We step with our non-dominant foot, and we can use our non-dominant arm to come forward as well to open up our chest. Meanwhile, we bring our throwing hand back above our head. We want to throw nice and hard in European handball, and we bring it forward as we step with the non-dominant foot. Hardest throws are just with one arm, not with two. So let's try that. Remember, when you're throwing kill mount in an indoor space, so you're aiming for maybe a spot on the floor or a spot low on the wall. Our nets are low. And remember, you're not hitting anybody, any furniture, any appliances, nothing like that. Three throws. Let's see it. Right, you'll notice Jacob's almost kicking me because he is doing a jump shot, which is great too in European handball. Get some a little more power. Let's try our last one, but keep it low with a jump. So we're jumping up as we throw. That's the way European handball players usually shoot. Remember, if you want to learn more about European handball, this is not the video for you. Go back to our European handball workout and you can see more about it there. All right, we've done our soccer, we've done our basketball, we've done our European handball, but we need to work on our defense. Let's just put our balls behind us for right now. When you're playing defense, remember, Hillmel, your knees are bent, your hands are up, because the person could be playing a hand sport, or if they're playing soccer, you could have your hands down. The key is your quick feet and looking at their chest. They move to the left, let's side shuffle left. They move to the right, let's side shuffle right. Good, they move forward, let's run forward. They move back, you should be able to run back. Let's try that again. Left, right, forward, back. Beautiful, and keep your head up, keep looking at their chest. There, oh, they're play if you're playing basketball against someone, they're trying to shoot, Jump up, try to block their shot. Get up nice and high. You can even get up with two hands, with either hand, get up nice and high to block their shot. Or if they're shooting in, so in European handball or in soccer, make yourself big. Get your legs out. Try to block their shot. But remember in soccer, try not to touch the ball with your hands. A little bit. Last thing, and then I'm done talking, we can get a drink. Goaltending. Remember, Hillmount, for your goaltending, make yourself big, just like you did yesterday in lacrosse. Bend your knees, hands up, get low, and get ready. If the ball is coming to your left, be prepared to get there. Coming to your right, good. Coming forward in front of you, coming hard behind you, absorb it. Coming low between your legs. Get low. Let's try that one more time. 
left, right, soft one, hard one, low, you got it. Thanks for all that time. We've learned the skills. We're ready for the game. Grab a drink from your bottle, and we'll play some socket ball. You know, man, I'm sweating. I hope you are too. We have set up our soccer net. We have set, oh, with our two water bottles to act as a crease. All right, they're a little bit out and a little bit wider than our net. We've also set up our basketball net so we can shoot in soccer and European handball, and we can shoot in basketball. Hopefully you remember this. Let's play some socket ball. All right, we're gonna show you how to play with one person, with two people, with three or more people. Okay, Vanilla, you can just stop for a sec. Uh, Ella behind Jacob, please. All right, if you only have one person, no big deal at all. You'll do the 10 point challenge. So Ella, you can come out here. 10 point challenge, it's one point if you score in European handball. One point if you score in soccer. Two points if you score in basketball. How quickly can you get 10 points? Let's see Jacob play. He has two. So you can't step in the crease with the ball. Keep going, Jacob. He has two still. He can also shoot for the net. The soccer net. He has three. He has four. He still has four. He still has four. Remember, don't touch the ball inside the crease. Still has four. That's five. He has six. He has seven. Remember to bounce that ball. He has eight when you're shooting in European ammo. We don't want to injure our goal. He almost has ten, but he still has eight. He still has eight. And he has ten. Did you beat him? All right, maybe you did. Jacob and Ella are going to show you how to play if you have two people. Watch him carefully. Jacob's going to start as goalie. Ella will start with the ball. I can't walk around. Jay Ella is going to try to shoot in either, <laughs> Ella is so excited to play, in either soccer or basketball or European handball. She could kick it up to herself to play some basketball, European handball, or she could put it down to play some soccer. Jacob's trying to be a bully. He can also block the shot for basketball. He has to stay in the crease though, and Ella's not allowed to touch the ball in the crease. All right, they're still playing. Ella, you can try a shot in the basketball net if you'd like. Oh, he tried to trick him. Can Ella score a basket here or in school? Whoa, boy, Jacob's like a professional soccer ball player. Let him, can we at least pretend that Ella scores a goal? There we go. They would switch. Ella would now be the goalie. Jacob would be the player. You score a goal. You get to be the goalie. The other person gets to be the player. All right, stop there. If you have three or more people, Hillman, you have a goalie. Goalie starts with the ball. You have two players, and they're playing against each other. It's versus. One person scores. They get to be goalie. Goalie comes out. You guys ready? Because here we go. <laughs> Ellie, you're playing defense here. Okay, Jacob scored. He's the goalie. New person in. Starts with the ball. Nice. Oh. Ellie, you're trying to get the ball for me if you can. You're playing against me, Ella. Trying to shoot on Jacob's soccer. European handball. Basketball. Good try. I'm going to see how they're doing. You're doing great, Hillman. We're gonna finish up over here. You keep playing as well if you'd like, and we'll see you soon for the cool. Welcome back, Hillman. We hope you had so much fun playing soccer ball today. We certainly did. Let's cool our bodies down. Starting with an inhale. Keep that march going and exhale. Breathe in. And you can stop your march there, your hands are on your hips, you're just rolling your neck to one side, then to the other side. As you know, soccer ball is not a real sport, it's three sports in one. It should probably be a real sport, all right? But it's so much fun to play. You can obviously play anytime. We were just talking how it's so much better if you have a larger space 
Maybe you could go to the park and play in a bigger space. Maybe you could play in your backyard or your front yard or something like that as well. We know it's so much fun in our gym. Let's, let's uh, stretch our arms. If you have a basketball net at each side with a net under each basketball net, but you obviously need a few more people for that. So if you have five or six people in your family, you're super lucky if they can all play with you. Other side. Let's stretch our core. Kind of make a nice straight line from our fingers all the way down to our toes. And other side. Ooh. Good workout today. We hope you got a good workout as well. Let's try a side lunge for the insides of our legs. First to the left. And to the right. Beautiful, I hope you feel that. Let's stretch the backs of our legs. Try to reach down and touch those toes. One side. and shake out that back leg, and the other side. And shake it up. Can we switch, stretch our quadriceps? Let's see your balance. Beautiful, and shake that out. Other side, remember to ground that foot into the ground. Feel a nice stretch right in these four muscles here. Beautiful. Let's end the way we started. In. And out. Two more. In. And out. Last one. Let's get low for this one. In. Reach up high. And out. Take a bow hill mount. Great job to you. Hope you enjoyed playing soccer ball. Grab a drink and we'll see you for our health tip of the day. All right, hill mount. Today is Friday, June 5th, which means tomorrow is Saturday, June 6th. And it is Fit Friday. And Saturday, June 6th this year means National Health and Fitness Day. All right, hill mount. I'm posting in your Google Classrooms and on Brightspace a link for how you can access all these wonderful virtual activities available to you for National Health and Fitness Days. There are activities specific for kids and families from the YMCA, from Participation, they're doing a live workout at 12 p.m., from the Canadian Paralympic Committee. All right, check it out, click on the links, check out what they are offering, and hopefully you can do your challenges one thing. All right, one thing that relates to National Health and Fitness Day from their website, okay? Obviously, if you can't, do something on your own for National Health and Fitness Day. Maybe you can go for a walk with your family. Maybe you can do another pose and PE workout. Maybe you can go play in the park, okay? Talk to your family, see what works for you. I will also attach the Canadian Olympic Committee has sent out a calendar for the month of June on daily activities that you can do for fitness for your body. And you'll notice National Health and Fitness Day is on there for Saturday, June 6th, so you'll already be able to check that day off. Okay, Hillmount, we really hope you enjoyed our Territory Invasion Week Part 2. We certainly enjoyed playing with you. As always, keep sending in your photos, your videos, your comments. We love seeing them, we love the feedback, and we love providing you with feedback as well. Okay, we hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday, and next week we are returning to our Netwall Sports. Netwall Sports, part number two. Okay, so. From, J from Jacob, from Ella, from myself, we wish you a wonderful weekend. 
we want to remind you to keep active and keep smiling and stay safe. And we'll see you on Monday, Hillmount. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.